Hi guys, I know a lot of you have had fun modding your NES Classic using my previous videos, but I thought it was worth updating you with Cluster M's latest version of Hatchy version 2.11. There are some great changes and best of all, you can utilise the NES Classic to its max and put over 600 games on there. Firstly, using the link in this video description, visit this page and download version 2.11 of Hatchy 2. Once downloaded, extract it somewhere. It's best to keep it on the root of one of your drives in my experience. When running Hatchy, Windows might complain. If this happens, click more info and then run anyway. Once Hatchy is loaded, you can check out all of the new options by going to settings. Console type. Choose whether you have a NES Mini or a Famicom Mini. Epilepsy protection. Pretty self-explanatory. Control hacks, here's the good stuff. This default option combination is select and down on the joypad to return to the main NES Classic menu. Select reset button combination. If you prefer to use a different button combination to return to the main menu, then you can change it here. Just tick which buttons you want to set as the new reset combination. Enable auto fire. As the message says, follow these instructions to get auto fire on either your NES Classic controller or a Wii Classic controller. Up A B equals start, controller 2. This simulates start on player 2 joypad. GUI hacks. Use extended font is selected. This fixes a lot of the font issues in the menus. You can also remove thumbnails and the menu music if you really want to. Maximum games per page. Okay, another big feature. You can set folders inside of the menu. Choose how many games you want to appear in each folder here. They will be sorted by alphabetical order and carried across folders. I understand it's safer to use 30 per folder, but experiment to find what suits you best. The folders do seem a bit fiddly, but you do get used to it pretty quick. 8-bit PNG compression. If you are using 30 games per folder, you don't really need to worry about this. You might want to use it though if you're going to be transferring a lot more games to your NES Classic. Global Command Line. Experts only. I really won't worry too much about this unless you know what you're doing. Ok, we can now start adding games. Click the Add Game button and choose your NES game. You may get an error saying that the mapper is not supported. You can choose whether to keep it or not, it may work. Repeat this process to add more games, or alternatively select all of the games at once and add. Again, with large amounts of games you may run into a lot of mapper issues. You may also get games that ask for a patch. This is recommended to do. Depending on how many games you are adding, this will take a long time to process. Now, to add covers automatically, go to File, Download Covers for All Games. I've sped the process up a bit as it does take a while. Don't be too concerned with any errors that appear. Once done, all your games should now have cover art. If there are any problems, you can manually add art by clicking the Browse button. The information on the right, like publish name and max player, should also be correct, but if you notice any mistakes, you can edit these. Also, if you want to use Game Genie cheat codes, you can enter these in the box as well. Once you're happy, you can click the Synchronize Select Games with NES Mini. The first time you run Hatchy, you will need to dump the kernel image from your NES Mini. Just click yes. A box should appear on screen with instructions, but in any case, connect your NES Classic to your PC with a USB cable, make sure the power is off and hold reset. While still holding reset, press the on button. After a couple of seconds, release reset. You also need to install the drivers if you haven't done so. You may get a Windows message warning, but click run. Hackchi will start modifying your NES Classic now. You may get a checksum error is unknown, but it's fine to click yes. You also get a warning message to keep the kernel dump safe, so it's a wise idea to do so. 
Okay, I've sped this process up, but depending on how many games you're transferring, this could take several minutes. Now, you can click OK here, and depending on how many games you're transferring, you will be informed you will need to repeat the process again. This is because the games are saved in a different part of memory. Again, follow the on-screen instructions to proceed. You only need to have installed the driver once. Eventually, it will transfer everything across, and now after waiting for the power light to turn off, you can go and plug it into your TV and give it a go. So that's pretty much it. Check out how the folders work and enjoy your new games. Don't forget you can go back to the main menu by pressing select and down unless you change that. If you found my video helpful, please maybe give it a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe. Thanks for watching.